We've recently had a number of leaks on Apple's upcoming iPhone SE 4, including some CAD model leaks that show us some truly interesting changes. These CAD leaks were posted by 91 Mobiles, which you may recognize from a number of our previous videos. They were also the ones who leaked the iPhone 14 Pro CAD files before, as well as a number of other smartphones way ahead of their actual release, like the Xiaomi 14 Pro, the OnePlus 11 Pro, the Galaxy Z Flip 4, and many others, all of which turned out to be spot on. So there's a very good chance that this 91 Mobile's iPhone SE 4 CAD leak is indeed correct. So what does the CAD leak actually tell us? Well, right off the bat, we can see that the iPhone SE 4 is getting a redesign. And not just any redesign, but one that matches the design of the iPhone 14 quite heavily. Gone is this rounded frame design that we've had on the previous two SE generations, and in is a much more modern look, with flat sides, a notch, and also some much thinner bezels compared to what we have now. And what's especially interesting here is that Mac Rumors reported the exact same thing back in September that the iPhone SE 4 will be using a modified version of the iPhone 14's chassis. And this does make a lot of sense. The iPhone SE 3 is Apple's only existing iPhone that still uses a pre-iPhone 10 design, a design that the iPhone 6 introduced back in 2014. And this really sticks out in today's lineup. Not even to mention that having such a small 4.7 inch display when every other smartphone right now features significantly bigger screens also makes it very hard for developers to optimize their apps. Trust me, I know. We have to optimize our app wallpapers for the iPhone SE specifically, and it's always tricky getting the UI scaling to look right just because of how small that display is. Switching to a much larger 6.1 inch display will make everyone's life much easier, consumers and developers alike. Now, 91 Mobile's also got their hands on the SE4's dimensions. These are similar to the iPhone 14's, although they are not exactly the same as the SE4 seems to be one millimeter taller and also 0.1 millimeters thinner. Once again, reiterating what Mac Rumors stated that it would use a modified iPhone 14 chassis, one that would also be lighter by six grams compared to an iPhone 14. And the reason for that being the camera. If we take a look at the back of the CAD leaks, we can see a single camera module, one that is also quite large. Now, having a single camera module does make a lot of sense. The iPhone SE line has always had a single camera, and since we have three modules on the Pro iPhones, two modules on the regular iPhones, having a single one on the SE makes sense. But what's surprising to me is just how massive this module appears to be, far bigger than on the SE 3. At first, I thought that this is likely the same main camera as on the iPhone 14. So I went into Photoshop and overlaid an image of the iPhone 14 on top of this SE4 CAD leak. And it turns out it does match perfectly. I then overlaid an iPhone 15, which as we all know, uses a larger 48 megapixel sensor. And guess what? The SE4's camera module was also a perfect match. And when I first saw this, I was quite surprised. I was like, there's no way that Apple would give their entry-level iPhone the same sensor as on the iPhone 15. Right? But then I remembered what MacRumor stated in their report from November, that the iPhone SE 4 will actually feature a 48 megapixel sensor based on info from their sources. Now, this is very interesting, as Apple only has two 48 megapixel sensors, the one inside the iPhone 15 and the one inside the iPhone 14 Pro slash 15 Pro, which is slightly larger. And based on this CAD leak, it does seem like Apple would give it the smaller 48 megapixel sensor that we have inside the iPhone 15. I'm still quite surprised that Apple's doing this, although I do think that it is the right move. Having only two sensors all across the board will make it easier from a manufacturing standpoint. It will also likely reduce the manufacturing cost too, as Apple can get a better deal if they just buy more sensors. And it will also make a lot of sense from a software standpoint, as they wouldn't need to optimize the image processing for too many sensors and chip configurations. One thing that I do find quite odd though is the flash module. The flash module on this is just so tiny, much smaller than on an iPhone 15 Pro or even an iPhone 14. However, once I align it with an image of the iPhone SE 3, it does actually match. Like, why would Apple give the SE 4 the same sensor as the iPhone 15, but the flash of the iPhone SE 3? It could just be a cost-saving measure, I guess. And even though this isn't that visible from the CAD models, 91 Mobiles does reference the possibility of us getting an action button on the SE 4. 
something that Mac Rumors has also reported on. We already know that Apple is adding the action button to the regular iPhone 16s too, so this seems to be Apple wanting to unify the lineup. Personally, while I do prefer the action button over the old mute switch, I still think it's far too small and far too difficult to reach, at least on my Pro Max model. We have heard some rumors that Apple might be increasing the size of the action button on the 16 Pros, although from the looks of it, this SE4 might still have the same sized action button as the iPhone 15 Pros. Now, one last thing that this CAD model shows is, of course, the USB-C port. That's pretty much a no-brainer. All of Apple's products have to switch to USB-C by the end of 2024 due to Apple's EU legislation. So, uh, no surprises here. Which brings us to the release date. Based on what Mac Rumors reported late last year, the SE4 would only be released in 2025. However, we usually see cat leaks much closer to the actual release, which makes me think that we could see the SE4 in September alongside the iPhone 16 and the iPhone 16 Pro. After all, there does seem to be a lot of overlap with the more expensive models, such as the camera, the action button, and even the design to some extent. Most rumors do seem to still point towards 2025, though including a recent report by the Alec in which they claim that Apple is currently negotiating with Samsung, Bowie, and Tianma to manufacture the OLED displays for the iPhone SE4. Apple apparently wants to get a $20 price point per display, with Samsung being the closest one to that, offering them $30. From the looks of it, Apple hasn't yet reached an agreement with any of the manufacturers, which does kind of throw a September release out of the window. In fact, the Alec does report an early 2025 launch, which would indeed match with the March-April release window for all the previous three iPhone SE models. This does make me wonder what would actually happen with the current iPhone SE until the new USB-C version releases, since, you know, Apple won't be able to sell this in the EU. So I'm assuming they would just discontinue it for a period of a few months until this new version gets released. And speaking of releases, yesterday we released our mesmerizing mountain spec for wallpapers. And this is the first design that everyone gets for free. It's in full 8K, so you can use it on your smartphone, tablet, and desktop, and it is one of the best designs in the entire pack. And if you're a subscriber for just $199 a month, you get access to all remaining nine wallpapers. So my favorite ones being this stunning purple and orange design, then this green one with the foggy scene in the background, this deep red sunset one, and then also this blue and gray wintry one. Of course, as a subscriber, you also get full access to all of our 60 plus packs. So that's 600 plus wallpapers with two new packs releasing each week. And you can find our app wallpapers on the Play Store and the App Store today. At the end of the day, I do think that this next SC is for sure what Apple desperately needs in order to compete in this low to mid-range smartphone market. The company Nothing, for example, launched this guy, the Nothing Phone 2A. It's a 320 pound phone here in the UK, which is 110 pounds less than the iPhone SE 3. Yet, it features a 120Hz OLED display as opposed to 60Hz LCD. It's also got a much more modern design with some crazy thin bezels. Sure, the MediaTek chip inside is only about half as powerful as Apple's A15 inside the SE 3, but it's still fast enough for everyday use. And there are so many more other examples like the Nothing Phone 2A such as the Pixel 7a, which is slightly more expensive than the SE3, but it's got a much more powerful camera with Google's image processing, as well as Google's flagship chip from last year, the Tensor G2, and also a higher refresh rate of 90Hz on an OLED display. Other manufacturers have even more low-end options, if you take a look at Redmi, Paco, and many others. Like, there's so much choice in this $300 to $400 price point, and Apple hasn't been competing at all here. Well, now with this SE4, they'll be able to somewhat be more competitive than they are now. We still won't have 120Hz or a notchless display, but when you consider the full package that Apple will give you with this phone, the outstanding performance, the color accurate OLED display, the iconic iPhone 14 design, and of course, iOS with all of its bells and whistles, I think that it will be a huge success. At least if they manage to keep the price the same as now which uh, I don't think they will, but let's see. I would love to hear your thoughts. I'm Daniel, this is Museum of Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenotech, signing out. Cheers. Yeah.